Here's the story of Timmy. Timmy decided, gee, mom, I want to start a shrimp tank. They went to their big box chain, bought a tank, and the representative told them that, yes, go home, set it up, and by tomorrow, you're ready for shrimp. <clears throat> Don't do that. All right, it's like burning a hole directly into your wallet, killing shrimp directly. All right, go through the process. Be a good steward of your tank cycle your tank fully before putting shrimp in. I at least wait a minimum of two to three weeks for not only the cycle to complete, but also algae and bacteria in the tank to grow to feed the shrimp. So if you're looking for more information on how to properly set up a shrimp tank, you can go to joeshrimpshack.com and he even has a telephone number, 952-212-7913. And if you want to jumpstart that bacteria cycle, you can also buy bacteria directly from Joe at joeshrimpshack.com using promo code at checkout, Aquarium Guys, for 15% off your entire order. Don't kill shrimp for no reason. We'd rather wait, purchase the shrimp on time, and have a wonderful tank. Thank you, joeshrimpshack.com. Welcome to the Aquarium Guys podcast with your hosts, Jim Colby and Rob Zolson. Jim, did you fart? Oh, wait, sorry. We're on the podcast. Guys, welcome to the Aquarium Guys podcast. I am Rob Zolson. You're a dick. <laughs> and I've added on this for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And and Rob is what? A dick. Uh, Rob is a dick, yes. A because dick. because he's, he, he, he tells us all the time, he does something embarrassing towards me, and now I have to kill him in his sleep. I mean, I, I do it to Adam, but uh, he's already under a towel. <laughs> <laughs> and how is house arrest going, by the way? I'm not under house arrest. Says the guy underneath a blanket. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, well, guys, welcome to the podcast. We're happy to have you. Um, what happened during the week, Jimmy? What happened during the week? You you seem to walk in in a particularly frothy mood. My my pond pooted out. It pooted out. My pond pooted out. So uh, you should you should tell the listeners what happened. So I have this pond in front of my home, and it's one of those three hundred gallon horse trough looking thingies, which is about what quarter inch thick. It's that high impact plastic. It's that rubber made deal. Rubber made deal. I mean, it's meant to be kicked by horses. We snow. Yeah. And anyway, so I just dug it down into my, into the ground. So it's level with the ground and I was losing about, it's been up there for several months. And I started losing like three or four inches of water per day. And so I had to, had to shut it down and I was very angry. Did you end up pulling it out and figuring out what was wrong? Nope. Still sitting there like that. After I got, I got sneaking out. I kind of got drunk anyway. Did you? I, yeah, I was going to do it. And then I started drinking and then all hell went. Your wife <laughs> called me to ask what one of my friend's names were. Cause he, she thought it sounded funny. So uh, I could definitely tell you guys got uh, got some party going on. Oh, yeah. And yeah, we had a few drinks, so it went all went well. Well, before we go into our uh, weekly updates, this episode is, again, how to be a baller on a budget when it comes to fish tanks. So behold the penny-pinching episode you guys have all been requesting. This episode brought to you by Geico. Save I wish. 30%. It is, it is brought to you by Joe Shrimp Shack. I like Joe. Where you can be the cheapest of bastards by using promo code Aquarium Guys at checkout for fifteen percent off. The cheapest, the bastard. Cheapest of bastards. Oh, okay. Yes, he's got some nice cholo wood. He does. For those that are listening, uh, I think we were told you a little bit in the ad. Uh, don't forget to send some love Joe's way. He, uh, I think, is a kidney stone that he had to have surgically oh, removed. No, wait, 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 wait. surgically that. removed. According to like a vague Facebook post. <laughs> I think it was surgically removed. Normally, they just use lasers and watch it blast out and then watch you scream like a girl for a week. But if they have to surgically remove it, that's something else. Usually, they let you pee it out, don't they? Oh, they they force you. Like, you have to go for, like, 36 hours of pure hell before they'll even consider it. And even then, they'll be like, yeah, we'll blast it with a laser first. But 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 you can go through labor on a baby for two hours, and they give you an epidural. On. Right. Yeah. Which, it, according to my female doctor, uh, kidney stones are way worse than any pregnancy. Really? So, I can't wait to hear all the feedback from the women out there listening. Yeah, right, they're yeah. angry right now. That all complaints are to go to Rob's Olson, courtesy hey. of HR department. <laughs> yeah, for right. all the ladies listening, you know, your tiny vagine and your 18-pound <laughs> baby is not my problem, all right? That's what the doctor said. I am not here to compare. Again, H- all complaints need That's to go right. to Rob's Olson. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. Let me see. We, we hardly have anybody listening this evening, and we've already pissed off all the rest of them. Well, yeah. So I guess our job's done here. So thanks. Have a good night. Since we do right updates each week on, on our lives a little bit, and then we read questions. Um, this is the uh, you know how to be a cheap baller on a budget episode. So I want to tell about my mistake. This week I got <laughs> last month's bill in the mail for my electric bill. That was funny because you were crying like a little girl. I have never had like a bad electric bill in my house. Two hundred dollars. Like that's like whew. You know, I guess I could swallow it. I have a lot of roommates, you know, tanks running, all that. It was four hundred over four hundred and fifteen dollars. I know why. Why? Because I didn't do my math and I had too many things plugged in. No, no, no. Um, electric rates have gone up because everybody is home due to COVID. So electric rates are up thirty to up to fifty percent in some areas of the country because everybody's at home, everybody's got their air conditioning going. Plus, they've got their internet and everything else. So the rate of power is now higher per so, person than what it originally would be because originally your you know your kids are in daycare in the summer or you're gone traveling. Well, nobody can do any of that stuff. So power bills went up. So you are a factual man. Like I cannot deny the tidbits of facts you throw at us. Like the whole titty caca was it nipple frog thing? Scrotum you said. Frog. Scrotum frog thing. Scrotum frog. Thought it was a joke. Nipple. Frog. Every time I try to like fact check you, you seem to be at, com- amazingly detailed. So you saying this, I have a question. If the idea is that we're using more electricity at home, shouldn't we get a discount because the businesses aren't using that same amount of electricity? No, that's not how no. it works. No, no. And, and and I don't know if you if you've seen you know there's coin shortages. Which I haven't had a problem with anywhere around here. No, nope. down in Minneapolis we did. We down, do down in Minneapolis we did. Well, I mean, but, but around they're here, they're always trying to pinch a penny. That's right. God, you suck. <laughs> but uh, so they're saying that part of the coin shortage is is that people keep their their change for the whole year for a summer vacation and nobody's cashed that that change in. And what's interesting now, and 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 here here's a for instance, people are broke, but most banks only the drive through is open. So in Detroit Lakes, which is our local area, there's three banks in town. All of them have gotten rid of their, their change counting machines because you can't drop change off through the little tube because it's just drive ups. There's no lobby anymore. So you physically can't even go and cash your change in at the bank in our hometown because, Why? because they have drive up windows. And they will not accept change through I, the window. I can't just give them like a you know, Monopoly money, cartoon style bag of change. No. Well, technically all money is Monopoly money. money. Yeah. So the only way is like through that horrible corn star at your local Walmart. That is right. And they Which charge you they, a fee. They charge you a fee. They take what, I don't know, 5% or whatever it is of the total. I'm I'm smelling a, a scheme here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I, I and also heard with the he's a Trump donator. I, I could be wrong on that one. The Wait, guy that I am? Coin star. No, the, the guy that owns the coin star machines. That one you might well, have to fact check me on. I might have to, but I was going to say I'm not. I voted no. for Harambe last year, or was it 2016? Oh, oh, who Harambe? Who's Harambe? Yeah, he remember that story where the uh, kid jumped in the gorilla pit and then they shot the gorilla to save the kid's life. They shouldn't have shot the gorilla. It was, it it a, was in Florida. Of was, course. It, was it a brand uh, new yeah. gorilla? I mean, no, no, I mean, no, it, it had a few. It was months. a silverback gorilla. Yeah, big ass gorilla named well, Harambe. Anything that comes over the freaking wall is food, right? Or at least a toy at, at very, <laughs> very worst. So he was gonna. He, the kid fell down. Apparently, somebody like I think the staff pulled out like a safety precaution. Who knew they had guns? At the I, zoo? I figured they'd have tranquilizers. I did. I did. No, 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 no. Why not tranquilizers? I mean, help because, us out here, Adam. You're fast. Okay. So if you actually go to like the Como Zoo and the Minnesota Zoo, you can actually see where they are. But I'm not telling anybody because they are under lock and key. And yeah, for that, every... don't share that shit on the podcast. <laughs> we we don't want to be blamed for another event happening in Minnesota. But yeah, okay. so, so they have it in case a dangerous animal gets out and they yep. have to protect the public. Yeah, around every like so around the tiger exhibits, the gorilla exhibits, um, the Komodo Kittens. dragons, they have rifles that are. Why don't they have tranquilizer rifles? Well, they because do. tranquilizer, yeah, they do. But tranquilizers aren't always going to work if an animal's hopped up on adrenaline. Really? Plus, it, yeah. it takes too long. Yeah. Oh, so, that I understand. So, it's so, like, it takes a minute or two for a giant silverback. So, if the tiger is chewing on your head 
And I go, I have a tranquilizer gun I can shoot them with, or the 30 odd six, or I could go to lunch. I'd go to lunch. I got questions for people that go to zoos. Like, what caliber do they have just sitting by for a, you know? I, uh, I do think it's a 30 odd six. Yeah. Crazy. That, it's not. That's a, that's that's a stopping seem bullet. Enough. No, no, no. Yeah. That's a stopping bullet. I mean, you could take down a bear with it, but it's still not like, mm, I don't know. I will, you, I will ask one of my zookeeper friends. Please. Please get back to us on that one because that is absolutely the most fascinating shit oh, I have heard all week. I have another fun fact for you. Please. So when they built the new football stadium in Minneapolis, the U.S. Bank Stadium, there is at least four snipers nests inside the Coliseum, which they have during the football games. They have actual snipers up in the snipers nest watching over the crowd so if somebody in the crowd would have happened to sneak in a gun and start shooting then they're they dead. are they're, they're allowed to take them out so now they're putting snipers nest in coliseums so many I questions probably pick them out too how does one do they wear an earpiece and then they get cl- like oh i'm sure we have them in our yeah. sights you have a go yeah <laughs> go no i think they have an automatic go yeah, you watch too much. You watch too many. Well, yeah, I think they have an automatic go. Like a kid with a pop gun or something. What if, what if it's somebody kicking, you know, that winning field goal? Shoot, or kick. what if it's Drew Brees just entering the stadium? Oh, who there knows? He goes. Yeah, you no. know, who that? We, it we, fell over. We don't want him dead. We just want him winged. You know, we just want him winged. Yeah, just shoot. Just a, injured. Shoot so a throwing arm. He yeah. never throws a football <laughs> exactly. again. Exactly. Oh, what, what kind of podcast is this? Well, well I don't know. Not one violent, for New Orleans. A violent podcast today. Obviously. Not one for New Orleans. We don't oh, have very good. much listeners, do we? In New Orleans, yeah, we lost somebody because they're probably a New Orleans fan. Poof. <laughs> yeah. Poof. So, uh, you got any news, uh, Adam? You're, you're, you're quite smiley today. Well, I was telling you guys about how the nine foot great white shark got eaten by another bigger great white shark. They figured, and that, and that made your day. <laughs> that made my day. Yeah. Before, they also rediscovered a new uh, a species of shark that they thought was extinct. And, and they're walking sharks. Yeah, there's four walking sharks off the coast of Indonesia, and then there was one, I think, the so gray like weasel shark, I think, gray-tipped weasel shark or something like that. So are, are they like street-walking sharks? I mean, like, hey, big boy, come on over. They are, they are street-walking sharks. I knew it. I just like how you I paint that out. Hey, big boy. What? I think I saw those in a 90s cartoon once. That was it's a, that was a TV street. show. That's it's all true. All right, street sharks, Jabberjaw. I'm gonna bring this back. Bring this back. Right? Ooh. Why are we here? We're here for fish. So let's answer some questions from some of our listeners. If you guys got questions, Rob's a dick. Go to <laughs> AquariumGuysPodcast.com, and on the bottom of the website, you can send us an email. You can text message us on our phone number. You can call and leave a voice message. That's you our can, favorite. You can get an etch a sketch, draw a picture, and take a picture of the picture and send it to us snail mail yeah i mean we, we should well wait they, they've disbanded the post there. no we'll get a p.o box i don't want anybody to know where i live all right so uh certainly do that otherwise you can join us in discord and ask questions live it's still on the website so this question right i'm gonna read it first uh comes from peter um this is my unheated tank i have a brown uh, algae uh, growing on the glass how to prevent it it's 180 liters liters must be uh from uk that's a 50 gallon tank by the way 47 gallons ish at 180 liters eheim pro turns about 300 liters an hour reduce lights to four hours a day feed two cubes of brine shrimp i don't know what cubes are measured in uh no, those literal cubes, cubes of brine shrimp frozen cubes frozen could cubes. they be the individual otherwise I, I see like those big chunky bastards no there's a frozen no, no, no. food this is another country you never know uh, frozen uh, food uh, every other day and a mixture of flake pellets and algae wafers and blood worms on the other days. I'm feeling that there's a lot of food happening here. Like yeah. not only is there a lot of lady, like that, that's a ton of food. Like any day at your house. Right. He also does a 40% water change twice a week. That's good. Which I feel like he's trying to uh, compensate for his overfeeding, but regardless, the tank has five black banded sunfish. Might be the sunfish guy from before. I should check that. Uh, six white creek gobies and one hillstream loach. I've recently seen MTS, where it explains a good amount of plant growth would rid the, uh, naturally without burning the tank, uh, Jim. I do have cuddle bone in there to make up for calcium loss, uh, as I wish to breed. 
sorry for the information overload. Just trying to give as much as possible. I Wait, love it is he trying to breed the stupid snails? I don't think he's trying to breed the snails. I think he's trying to breed the fish. I think the snails are the showing. The snails up. breed automatically. So is this I mean, the tank? Is no this problem. a picture of the tank that he sent you? That is. I gave you the picture. Jim okay. and I are looking at it as well. And I'm seeing a lot of brown algae. So he, I don't think he's getting enough light. He's, he says he's cut back to four hours a day. Number one, that's not a lot of light for anything. And I see that some of the plants in there have brown tips on some of the plants, but it's very hard to see over the brown algae buck. I see a, a, a bright light through the tanks. Uh, is this, could that be a window or, or is that just a reflection of light from the hood? I don't know. I think it's a reflection of light going through it to the white wall behind. Okay. Check the phosphate levels. When you get that brown slimy algae, you have a lot of phosphates in your water. That's all over everything. It's a diatom. That brown shit is a di brown stuff is a diatom algae, and it actually is that. <laughs> all of a sudden, we're politically correct. How dare you? But um, I, I agree with Adam. So I'm I'm wondering if the frozen food has a lot of phosphates in it because it sounds like he's feeding a lot of frozen. And then if well, he's going to breed like the the sunfish, doesn't he need it more open than that? Well, this is just one section of the tank. We can assume oh. that maybe it's more. We, we can't. We don't know. what we, He didn't give us a full tank shot. Shame on you. But looking at this, right, the things I can go over is that was a ton of food he get, he showed us. Flake, pellet, wafer, cube, Lots dried. Frozen. It's, it's a whole lot of mix. And there's no way he's taking tiny, tiny pieces of each and barely feeding the tank every day. Immediately, I'd start switching to every other day. The only time that you want to feed more than that is especially on a full grown tank and you're not growing out anything uh, and cold water fish in particular, he's doing almost exclusively a cold water tank. So that tank should be sitting at 65 degrees as a minimum, especially with those sunfish, Hillstrom uh, loaches, that whole thing. Did he say so he should be feeding every other day lightly? He doesn't have a heater in there. Does he? Uh, I think it's the same sunfish guy, which okay. we just told remove the heater and keep it, keep it cold. So that's a ton of food feed every other day, especially for cold water fish. And, Instead of, you know, mixing the food, every time you feed, mix up the food. So do just the cubes. Then the next day, just the flake. And so on and so on. The only thing that you would have to worry about is algae, which clearly you have some stuff in your tank for placos. You didn't even list placos as a species. So forget algae wafers. Just take those out of the, uh, the diet. I really wouldn't worry about banded sunfish. Everything in that tank should be really feeding on protein. So scrap the wafers, rotate the food instead of mixing it. And uh, yeah, because even if you have not enough light, you'll get brown algae and you said the phosphates, which is a sign that you're overfeeding. Something will grow in your tank if you put too much food. You have brown algae. I'm pretty darn sure that's your thumb, that you're something that's showing up. So let us know on that. But then also the rest of the email, it says, uh, secondly, Oh, when the leaves go uh, brown on the plant, do you just trim the leaf or the whole stem? Uh, that's to your discretion. Some It depends on the plant as well. If something's brown on the plant, I just try to trim it, but you may have to, in some crypts, just snap the whole leaf. You can just pinch the leaf off. Right. So do your homework per plant. That's the only recommendation I could do. There's a few I saw in your tank. And then thirdly, he says, I'm a heterosexual male who listens to a lot of podcasts, and Adam has the sexiest voice out there. It's money. It is. It is, it is money. money. And that's what we should have. Give Adam, like, just the first 15 minutes, he could just read poetry. Right. In a, in ah. a British accent. That's yeah. a butcher. Yeah. And smoke a pipe. <laughs> in a smoking jacket. That'd in be a, cool. In a smoking jacket. God, Adam gets a lot of fan mail. Yeah, he does. Even guys who are straight are loving up on Adam. <laughs> and I said, uh, I messaged back. I said, thanks for the question. We'll answer on the show, my dude. Also... Hashtag no homo, Adam is sexy. He is. He is very sexy. And he asked the next question. He literally messaged us back. I have not sent back. I want Adam's permission. He asked if Adam's on Pornhub. He probably is. What the hell? Happy, no. to, happy to use any reference to wind him up. <laughs> wow. Well, I've seen Adam's wife on Pornhub. But I've never seen Adam. So. Well, I we just got to Adam on Pornhub either. Can yes. you answer this question for the audience? What's, what's the question? Pornhub or any other site? No, probably, probably some dark web stuff. I'm so guessing. like, because Adam, because Adam, if we've all talked about Adam secretly, and we all know he's part CIA, part uh, NSA, KGB. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a double secret agent. So just yeah, okay. looking at him, he just looks guilty. While being a coupon clipper, he's the he's the real maverick here, ladies and gentlemen. That's correct. 
I think I saw him uh, modeling Snuggies on Amazon once. Oh my what gosh, I'd pay for that. And adult diapers. Jesus. Hey, what? guys. What? Guys, new uh, new goal. Uh, Adam will send you a uh, personal picture if you PayPal him $15 of him and a Snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paying nothing and no. How about no, no, you get money. That's how this works out. Yeah. Oh. How about you you do like a sexy shirtless top, you know, shot like you know, like your Magnum PI from back in the in the eighties. You know, because you probably got a really hairy chest, don't you? I bet you not do. really. Okay, just checking. So that okay. wasn't you on Pornhub because that guy had a no. had a lot of chest hair. Hot. All right. Well, let's dive into our topic a bit again about saving you money on your hobby being a aquarium baller on a budget just don't buy an aquarium that's, so that's <laughs> drop mic actually it gets cheaper the more aquariums you buy wonderful you know that was my answer to the guy who's got algae why don't you just buy another tank and start over this, <laughs> this brought to you by aquarium guy i'm just gonna have a like a bot that auto emails back i think you should get another tank yes, that's right <laughs> i think you should get another tank all right so uh I'm going to go down a, a list that I've curated. Jimmy has a list as well. Adam has his uh, quirky, you know, comebacks for everything. So please uh, insert where you freely want to, Mr. Adam. Your butt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So first things first, let's, uh, let's pick on filters. So some of this um, comes back from our Tips, Tricks, and Hacks podcast. I think it was episode 11 when we first started. Uh, we'll repeat a couple of these, but again, we're episode like, was this 52? I think this is going to be, we need to cover some ground again, remind you of how we've already saved you money. You know, you've earned double off of your $0 investment. That was that your joke, Jimmy? No, no. Uh, no? What was your joke? <sighs> we're going to give you your money back. $0. Double your money back. Double your money back. Okay. Two times nothing, still nothing. <laughs> Dick wad. All right. So first on my list is filters. We've talked about this in the past and ways to save money. So number one, quilt batting. If you want to replace your uh, filter cartridge or repad the plastic insert that you put into the back, your hang on the back filter, use it for your canister filter, your sump. Quilt batting is the best way to go. So there is a caution to this. You have to have 100% polyester quilt batting, not the mix. And some of them have some sort of chemical treatment. So the best way to check this out is take the quilt batting, run it through some water. If you get any bubbles, you know there's some chemical on it, and it's not kosher to use. Normally what they do is they take those, anything that they treat to be fire retardant is green, be it the foam or the batting. Did you know that? Wait, can, we say that on, can we say that on the podcast? Fire, fire retardant? Retardant. Retarded. You are a retard. <laughs> I didn't want to offend anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, you don't want to offend somebody. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I didn't God. even understand what you were talking about until Jimmy repeated it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been licking windows today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. We all have. So, again, quilt batting. You can get two different types on top of the 100% polyester. You can get what they call the, the quilt stuffing. Don't get that. Get the sheets of quilt batting. comes in a roll. You cut it to fit your canister filter, whatever filter media you want to use. And uh, I can't explain how cheap that is. You can get like a roll for like, what, nine, ten bucks on Amazon, and it lasts forever. You can re-rinse it out, reuse it a couple times before you throw it away. Like your underwear. Like my underwear. That's right. Also, for people that are listening, if you are a female or have a partner that happens to be a male in this day and age, oh, I, I, hear me out. Don't buy used underwear on uh garage sales uh men have a tendency to wear them until they there's a reason they want to get rid of them so uh public service announcement thank you jimmy for the tangent i have are never you, seen are you speaking from experience i am my mother used to buy i've never from garage seen sales. not one time have i ever seen underwear oh i have on a garage sale you need to go to the ones where they're missing teeth underwear no way what the yeah. hell is your thoughts I've seen boxers that have been through one too many rounds. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> so this weekend I was listening to uh, XM radio because I have XM radio and they had a comedian on from somewhere in Wisconsin. And he was talking about uh, that 
people in Los Angeles, where he's from, don't know what hell a flea market is compared to what they know in in Wisconsin. And he told a story about when he was a child, uh, age of seven, he bought a live grenade from a Woo! live grenade from a guy at a flea market, and he brought it and showed it to his mom, and she goes, "What the hell is that?" And he goes, "It's a grenade." And so she went back to the guy and 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 said is this a live grenade? And he goes, yeah, but I bent the pin a little bit so he can't get it out. And he goes, she goes, you take it back and give us our money back. He goes, well, the kid talked me down to three bucks. She goes, well, here's your three bucks and gets back the uh, grenade back to the guy. And he says, so my mom says, now here's your three bucks to buy. go buy something else you could use. So he goes, me and my cousin went and bought a whip. Because that, that's safer. Yeah, because this is Wisconsin and that's how they roll. So if you... Uh, if you want to get a live grenade or whips, you go to the flea market in Wisconsin. Yeah, I was watching uh, one of those YouTube things. They found a live grenade in the river because they're just scuba diving. They had to like call in the bomb local bomb yeah. squad and everything. It's a process, like weird deal. Anyways, back to the subject filters. So quilt batting, sure, but even better for the hang on the back filters because they have those cartridges. You normally go to your, you know pet store, local Walmart, if whatever brand that you purchase to try to match or order online. They're expensive. Some of them come with carbon when you don't necessarily want to use it. And uh, just not fun. And they've got also have the generic ones that will fit into your. So, I mean, if you have a name brand one that you're spending $9 for a box, you probably can find them for half that price just by the generic form that fits in there. And even the generic forms that I've seen kind of like didn't fit right or they were trying to like pop out panels to make it fit. I've seen a lot of bad ones over the years. I haven't bought anything recently. But go online, get yourself a matten filter. It's essentially just a black sponge. Again, it's cut to fit, but this is more of the sponge filter-esque sponge. It fits right in to your hang on the back filter. Just make sure that you're cutting it um, not too high, because let's say that your filter clocks, right? Over time, it catches enough. You want it so it overflows the top and doesn't overflow out the back of the hang on the back filter like I did two weeks ago. But then you got a 30% water change. Wasn't that much easier? Right, but onto my carpet was not the plan. But it's still 30% water change. It's a win in my book. Right. So these matten filters, they I've yet to replace mine. I've used mine. Uh, the last ones that I've done, I've done uh, quite a few. Generally, the, the filter burns out before I actually get rid of the matten sponge. They last that long. So, uh, yeah, they by far the cheapest way for hanging the back filters. Now, we told you also in the podcast before about pot scrubbies. If you want to buy bio uh, media, normally you have to go and get these bio balls, plastic pieces, beads. And it, it's crazy how expensive that stuff is. I've even 3D printed my own. Each ball took 30 minutes to print. It was insane. Instead, go to your local dollar store and buy yourself pot scrubbies. They're just plastic. You know, take a sniff. Make sure that they're not uh, covered in detergent. I, I will sniff a pot scrubby, sir. <laughs> you go ahead and laugh at me. I'll sniff it up. Uh, you're sniffing underwear. You're sniffing pot scrubbies. You've got a problem. I didn't sniff the underwear. I, just I, knew I the... doubt that very much. You probably did. I, I think everybody there smelt what was going on. Smell what the rock is cooking. But yeah, pot scrubbies are the best way. I have in my big sump pot scrubbies. They work wonders. Cheap. Um, however, they, they don't work moving, but they're, they're still fantastic for wet, dry, or just wet. Give it a try. So, do we, do we talk about the electric bill next, Jimmy? You can talk about your electric bill. I know it's still kind of a sore subject on your part. It, it's very sore. So, uh, again, for over $415 for my last electric bill. Adam said apparently because electric bills went up 50%. It, it, I'm going to check my electric bill now because that was a crazy amount of money. Check, your, check your price per watt, kilowatt hour, because mine was like, it's like up to like seven bucks a kilowatt hour now. It was, uh, it was very, very hot last month too. So central air probably never turned off. You are working from home. You can't turn off a light when you walk out of the room. I, I've been here. Well, here it was the grand like ne neglect from Rob's all the way around. So number one, my AC unit, which is a fine AC unit, the uh, furnace heater filter was clogged. So that was stopping air from being pushed through my, my house like it should be. Upstairs, I have two floors, a basement and upstairs. The upstairs vents were uh, basically, except for like two, were all shut because someone got too cold. Re. I was not happy. So I went in every room, bathroom, kitchen. There's literally a towel 
in front of the one in the kitchen because it made my wife's feet cold. So uh, very angry how she plugged my entire house's AC so it ran 24 hours a day. I had it turned to a mode called um, cool to dry. So it reads the humidity in my house and then turns on regardless of temperature. So if it gets like 65% humidity, boom, it turns on to try to dry it off. So what I didn't think is I have three other roommates with their own bathroom. The thermostat is right next to the door of an, a continual stream of people taking showers and opening the door to let the humidity hit the sensor. So literally running 24 hours a day. And you have a few tanks downstairs. Just a few adding more to the humidity. So I shut that feature off. And the tanks I have, I have a 125, I have a 75, a 90 square, a 60 tall. I have a new shrimp rack I'm building and then an entire rack of nine 10-gallon tanks all in one circulating sump. And a better rack. So out of all of those... And a better rack. Oh, yeah, the better rack, too. Forget it about that. I have a, was it, 34-tank better rack? It's kind of like the one you see on Aquarium Co-op. In fact, it's the exact same one that the Aquarium Co-op has on their YouTube channel. Fantastic beta rack. Highly recommend it if you ever have an opportunity. They're quite expensive, but uh, I had enough running. So I decided... Damn, that electricity bill is big. So what, my biggest recommendation to you, find things you need to unplug. So if you have a multi-tank room, such as I do, instead of you know having each tank with at least one air pump, instead have one linear pump and run PVC pipe in the ceiling. So that's what I did. I put PVC pipe up. I removed, I think in total, uh, was it 14 pumps and filters? In total, I have like a little pile I posted on Facebook. Uh, definitely electric savings there. I switched a lot of tanks over to sponge filters rather than two hang on the backs, for instance, or a canister. And uh, hopefully going to save uh, quite a bit of money. Well, and we'll give a report next month when you get your electricity bill. Right. And if it's still high, I'm going to personally uh, take a shit in Adam's lawn. Because <laughs> it's Adam's fault. Right. Because he said something. So now it's his fault. Well, I will tell you that when I had my store, I dropped my electric bill, uh, let's see, $550 the first month I switched from hang on the back filters to sponge filters and under gravel. Wonderful. There's two. Number one, air pumps. You know, do a linear if you have a room. One air pump to pump everything, and then you can switch to sponge filters. Heat the room instead of heating the tanks. I can't do that particularly where I'm setting at. We have a bedroom down here, and it'd be very hot to sleep. So, if you can't, also look at heater controllers. So, a lot of the pump are the heaters that you have are efficient to a degree, but they really don't do the job. Having a heater controller is more accurate in the temperature, stops the heater from running excessively. Certainly worth the small investment on the heater controller. Look, look into those as well. Now, Jimmy, you, what? I picked on you in the past. You said those good old fashioned, you know, rotary timers to use. You know, I made fun of you. I used to use them for my Christmas it. lights when I had Christmas cheer. But since I've gotten on this podcast, my Christmas cheer has gone down. It's just pooped. Yeah. Well, I'll get you eggnog this year and I will eat crow and say that timers are a wonderful thing. Timers are wonderful things. And they do have efficient timers now that and they have timers that don't sound like a egg timer where they go tick 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 tick. Yeah. So definitely That's not always an egg timer, Jim. It could be a bomb, couldn't it, CIA guy? We got we made a bomb joke with the guy with a towel around his head. Yeah, poor That's Adam. That's why I don't fly with Sorry. you. We, we we should go to the airport and just hang out, Adam. Nope. They actually let you on planes? No. Shut up. They do. Do not set up for me. <laughs> Quack. I can just hear him be like, "Hey, Jim, why don't we go to Panda Express? It's like a two-hour drive. I'm gonna take off early for work." Go there, get a boarding pass, go to the express lane because you thought it was the boarding pass, and boom, Panda Express. I would just never uh, say boom, Panda Express, and a boarding pass in the same sentence. <laughs> no, no, that's bad. It's not good. I mean, see, he knows the CIA NSA code words. That's right. See, I would take Adam to like the airport and then pretend like I know him. And then at the very end, when I hand him a suitcase, I go, Thanks for taking my suitcase, stranger. And then just run. <laughs> That end, you have a uh, Beats pill strapped to you going, click, click, boom. <laughs> We're going to hell. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
So other things to save electricity, because that is the biggest savings right now. I'm on an old man thing to shut off your lights. You turned in your dad. That's funny. I have. It's it's happened. Do you yell, get off my lawn to the other kids too? Mainly because I'm raked over the coals with my electric bill. Get off my lawn. <laughs> um, LED. Right. If you still Led have a, Zeppelin. Woo! If you stairway to heaven. I love it. If you still have a fluorescent old or, or even like the glass bulb hood over your tank. Yeah. Stop it. Throw that shit out. You're old, all right? No, I, no, sell it. To who? Tell me how to it. All right, you're not wrong. If if Adam can buy underwear at his garage sale, you can sell your... Wait, wait, wait. I never bought underwear at a garage sale. That was you. <laughs> you can sell your old fluorescent light on Facebook to scam someone else. But be smart. Get rid of those things. Or just use it to grow your favorite plant. LED lights are not hard to get. I've heard people having mixed results with plants. I have not had a problem. I don't know if I'm buying the correct lights. I'm just buying the cheapest white LED lights, and I have growth like a madman. Do your homework. Find one. They're cheaper than hell on Amazon, and get LEDs. They're going to save way more than you. What, you what kind of plants are you growing, Robs? Yeah, Robs. Well, I mean, they don't have water pot yet, so we're going to work on that together, aren't we, Jimmy? Technically, you could probably grow pot in your water. It'd be fine. I wonder if they have like a hydroponic pot plant. That'd be. So I'll miss you, plants, you. You can grow all plants in water, and they'd be fine. Well, for those that are listening, we do not condone doing any narcotics in your water. But if you do, email us at the Aquarium Guys Podcast dot com. We have the website at the bottom. We're really intrigued to listen to your pot growth stories on your aquaponics. You can also switch out your T5 bulbs um, and your fluorescent lights. They have bulbs that are LED inserts. You just swap them out. You... Yep, I did that in my kitchen. Hell yeah, I did that in my kitchen. My wait, kitchen wait, wait. Had... You what? What? No, no, no. Keep going, Jim. I want to. I'm going to ask this question afterwards. He's Go almost ahead. there. Keep going. It, oh, oh, that's right. Should we play the theme from Jeopardy here? No, not Jeopardy. Not Jeopardy. Click, click, boom. That's his favorite. Oh, that's right. No, uh, in my kitchen, I. I have a uh, four foot fluorescent light holds four light bulbs. I took. Uh, Wait, are these the lights that look like nipples? No. Okay, just clarify. No, it's downstairs in the bar. <laughs> God, I hate you people. Hurry I, up. We're waiting. You're did, on, you're, we're on a suspense here. Did you say hurry up or herpy up? It's oh. a, it sounded like herpy up to me. No, it. Anyway, I replaced the damn fluorescent light bulbs with LED fluorescent light bulbs. Cost me about twelve dollars, and uh, I went through my entire house. And you don't think you have that many light bulbs? Go through your house. We had fifty-six light bulbs in our house that we replaced with LED. Just took it up to shorts, replaced them all. We dropped our our light bill by twenty-five, thirty bucks the first month, which then I took that money and I bought beer just so I can deal with you people. <laughs> Uh, contact us, McGolden Light. We want to be sponsored. We are a Minnesota podcast. That is correct. Can you take hey, the four foot strip lights and pop those out and put the LED things in them? The uh, four foot strip lights. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about the like long fluorescent lights. Yeah. Yeah. You that's can... that's. They have LED four foot floor. They look like fluorescent light bulbs, four foot long, but they're LED. Some of them need a ballast, so talk to your guy at uh, Home Depot to make sure you're getting the correct ones, but yes. Yeah, it was going to cost me about $150 to replace my light above to go to an LED fixture, but he said, just try these LED light bulbs for a while, and they work just fine. Ta-da! Good to know. So use your timer on your lights, because humans are horrible. I, I, I wake up at noon. I'm going to shut them off at one. Stop that. Keep your fish in a consistent schedule and save a couple bucks. Use timers on your light, timers on your pumps if you only want them running certain times a day. Timers with all of this. Do not use timers on your grandmother's, you know, oxygen machine. That's not good. No, definitely not. So last thing on my electric bill rant, right, is... Are you still on this? I am. Electric bill is important, man. It's where you're saving your most money, especially right now, according to Adam. So sumps, normally you would have a hang in the back filter, canister. Uh, I recommend sponge filters, never get rid of those. But as far as big tank filters, sumps are bar none my favorite, especially when you have multi-tank. I have a 75 gallon on a stand and 125 gallon on a stand. I am now going to be putting that on both those tanks on one sump. I'm going to share them. Having an overflow on the side, 
And that will drastically not only reduce my electricity, but also maximize my capacity for filtration. I'll have a wet dry filter. Hopefully I'm gonna make them out of Rubbermaid uh, drawers. You can go to Walmart, they have those three tier shelves. Works perfect. You can put a bigger tote on the bottom if you wanna feel safe and have them run both tanks. And put a UV in. Ta-da, UV heater. Make sure your heater's uh, above your point. Go to refer back to our uh, episode with uh, Lessa Cobalt. It will ruin your warranty with, uh, with certain companies, but uh, great place to put your heater in my opinion. Certainly check it out. Sumps shared on tanks if you have multiple. Jimmy, what? I'm speaking too much. What do you have in your list? What do I have in my list? You know, kind of with the talking about heaters, if you're really watching your budget, you know, are, you can run cold, cold water fish with no heater, which will save you a bunch of money. Done. White clouds are pretty. But you also can 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 run, I mean, if you're a discus lover, you're running your heater at what, 85, 86? But if you're just running, you know, neons and cardinal tetras, you're, you know, 72 to 76. So just by the choice of your fish will affect your budget uh, with the cost of your fish plus with the cost of running your heater. And really do your homework. Some of these fish, they say a recommended rate, but they can go lower. For instance, like African cichlids, Andrew Henderson, which is a listener of the podcast, um, he's from the Minnesota Aquarium Society, and he has an entire basement that we helped. There's a video on it. But he ran his basement a lot lower. I think he was like 70 degrees or a little lower than that. Certainly do your homework. All right. Another one I had, too, is uh, we're just talking to Scrap uh, before we went on the air here. And you can custom build your own stands and save yourself a tremendous amount of money. But uh, There's a a million ways to build stands. There's a, a thousand different woods. There's uh, some people have used blocks and then uh, dressed up the blocks with a, a wooden skirt. So just by building your own custom cabinet could save you hundreds of dollars. So to go on the website, right, just on one of the uh, main box stores, the amount of money that they charge for aquarium stands is outrageous. It's not necessarily that they even do them individually. They may do them online, but you'll get, I've seen 55 gallon tanks with a stand and hood combo go for what six hundred, seven hundred dollars for a fancy one. Right. It's generally made out of crappy wood, enough where it'll hold the stand correctly, but it doesn't look that great. The hood may not come with the features you're looking for. Skip it. You know, build your stand the way you want it, and you'll probably it cost a lot less. Although you have to put the work in, and then as far as your hood goes, you know, buy your LED light elsewhere or get it separately because a lot of times it's cheaper and then use glass lids or even the uh was it polycarbonate uh clear plastic lids that you'll find at like your home depot menards they work just as well yeah depending on what you want to do with with lids and stuff i mean you can go out and buy a hinge that that hinge that flips your your lid back and forth you can buy that in six foot lengths and you can go to your local hardware store have them cut the glass to your specifications the one thing you'll need to do with your glass is you'll need to take a, a, a emery cloth or some sandpaper and, and smooth out the edges. But you can make your, uh, I think, cost on a 55-gallon uh, lid is about $29 cost. So I don't know what it retails for, a lot more than that. And you probably can make it for about 7 or $8. Well, let's even go further, right? So I just did my 60-gallon tank, right? And that cost me $2 a pane. It was four panes because I had to have them hinged. So you're looking at eight bucks in glass. I bought handles. I got this little like 3M hooks. So that was another, what, five bucks for the two hooks I needed. And piece of sandpaper, what, three bucks? Right. So yeah. I'm I'm under way under $29. Yeah, you can buy a lot of sandpaper for three bucks. I just forgot the hinge. Just didn't want the hinge. It said it was just another right. piece of glass. Yeah. You can go online and buy those little Aquion uh, lid holders. So if you want it to look a little more professional. But like Rob said, you also could use the little 3M uh, the command hooks, strip hooks, command strip hooks, and, and whatever you want, or you can take some gum and an old stick and put on there for all I care. Or what? Just lick it. No. No. Okay. Fine. What else you got, Jimmy? What else do I have? Well, I tell you what. You know, we were talking earlier about equipment. How many of you out there have boxes? I know I do. Boxes of filters. Uh, back behind filters, uh, sponge filters and stuff. If you would spend a half hour 
one afternoon on a Saturday going through that box, you probably can get enough uh, new, you know, old filters swapping parts and stuff. You probably get two or three of them running. And so uh, you wouldn't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on a new back filter if that's what you want. Uh, I know when Rob came back from Ohio Fish Rescue, you came back with a truckload of stuff from Big Rich. And we've been using that stuff and, and going through that. And, uh, you know, what is one man's garbage is another man's treasure. So you absolutely can save a bunch of money just by going through your old equipment and make that decision. You know, is this worth keeping so I might need a part later on or just save all the parts that uh, you know you might need and throw the rest away and keep your fish room nice and clean. So when doing this, right, the best place to get rid of your equipment uh, used to be Craigslist. You can still use it, but in my opinion, Craigslist is sketchy and is for truckers looking for a good time. Uh, stay away from it. Instead, go to Facebook Marketplace, which is the new modern version of Craigslist. However you feel about Facebook, it's still handy to use. And you don't have to be a member of Facebook to use it, do you? You at least have to have an account if you want to sell something. But if you just want a Facebook stock without messaging someone, you can certainly use it without an account. Yeah, I don't even know what Facebook is. I'm not on it. You know, another thing that just saved me a bunch of money, uh, somebody locally called me up and said, hey, I have a whole bunch of water lettuce and pond duckweed. I'm just going to throw it. Do you want it? And I went, heck yeah. And they gave me a little container full. And I want to say it was, it was probably about a foot in diameter, this container. And I threw it in my 300-gallon pond. It covered maybe one sixteenth of my pond. And in two weeks, it covered 90% of my pond. And it is so growing so fast. So if you can get plant trimmings from a friend or an acquaintance uh, and start your plants, if you, I mean, half the fun of having plants is watching them grow, right? So I'm not going to lie to you. Most of the plants that I get, I don't buy plants traditionally like you go to a Petco or order spe a special online unless I need that like one. Like I like that Tiger Lotus. That was a wonderful bulb to buy online. But otherwise, most of the time I just talk to like a, a plant enthusiast and say, hey, man, what if I take you out to dinner, pay you uh, 50 bucks and you fill up a bucket of trimmings? Give me whatever, however you got. And I've never had like a true plant enthusiast turn that down, like a free burger and some cash. Wonderful. And I have been given the most crazy amount of plants. I'll take a picture, send it to somebody, and like, oh, you have so-and-so. I'm like, oh, is that what that's called? Yeah. And I, I just enjoy the crap out of it. And how many times have I got home from here with a bucket full of, of plant trimmings that you've taken off? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a heck of a way. I mean, because you could easily spend $8, 10 $12 on one plant. And if it's something that you really, really want, I mean, I get it. But uh, for the most part, uh, people just want plants just to look at, and they're not really trying to... Uh, you know, become a plant expert. Plant people are wonderful if you just give them a flat amount of money and say, surprise me. Like, highly recommend it. And also, if you're trying to look for places to network, we mentioned Facebook. That's where a lot of people have those Facebook groups where they uh, sell like, stuff in your area. But also look for the aquarium societies. The aquarium societies are not just beneficial as far as, you know, lectures, information, but also the swaps that they put on like the actual local area swaps, which I know right now with COVID, everything's on pause, but you still have like the Minnesota Aquarium Society just finished doing an online auction. It was wonderful to try to swap. People could communicate. We all joined in on Zoom. I think there was probably, what, 70 of us online in total uh, all night long. It was, uh, was experience. I want to say two weeks ago. Nobody tells me. Day, a week ago. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you guys are busy. You're still a dick. Poop on you, Robs. You are. Poop on Robs. But no, check those out. You'll find a lot of uh, great things and save a lot of bank. What do you got, Adam? With my shop, I switched all my back filters to the under, or under gravel and sponge filters. Heated the room to make tanks all the same temp. I also did it so that I put my hottest tanks on top so that, like, for my discus and stuff, that was always on top so that um because heat rises it used to take a lot of fishing on trade too and, and make money oh, that yeah way. well yeah that was but that's that's because you have to otherwise the people dump them in the rivers and lakes and everything too no adam he's the uh attractive olive skim gentleman that drives a bentley so he doesn't care about saving money <laughs> he's all here to burn his checkbook I mean, look at his smile that's <laughs> teeth whitening right there oh my god it must be nice to roll around on your rolls royce in wabasha minnesota yeah okay people People look up to you and go, you're a handsome man. He might as well be from Singapore. Yep. <laughs> All right. 
Well, I'm going to go a couple more on my list then. Let, let's let's go on to a, a small rant. Many of you listening to the podcast may be experts, right? And we know we have a lot of new people, but for those of you that have been in the hobby long enough, you should know better. If you have stuff that's sentimental, I understand. Keep it. I have an old Metaframe tank. I want to make it a historic piece of the 1930s Aquaria. I get it. Have fun. But if that's not sentimental to you, throw the shit away, right? If you have an old heater that's from, you know, the 60s, probably not energy efficient, guys, right? If you have an old, uh, you know, rotary piston pump, you have to oil every six months, definitely going to be a uh, electricity burner, all right? If you have a filter that's been making a slight noise, but it's been still running for the past two years, I guarantee you, you spent six times the amount on electricity than just buying out a new filter. So if you have shit that's verifiably old, it's going to be using more electricity 90% of the time. If your filter's making a noise, it could be something so simple as a piece of gravel in the impeller motor or just change the impeller because those magnets wear out after a while. That's a cheap you fix. You watch Saving Dory too much. I mean, if uh, marine land filters, the bio wheel filters, yeah. I bought, I mean, the ones you buy now, they're not modular. They're all fused together. They're a little cheaper because they're made in China nowadays, but they still work great. But when you go in there after it's been used for a while and Jimmy comes over and kicks up your sand and the filter uh, ingests it, it grinds in that plastic gear. And even if you clean it out, it'll still grind forever. That is not an efficient running filter. A new filter is probably, what, 30 bucks? Get a new one. Just pitch it. I, I was the biggest culprit of this going through and doing this whole uh, one pump air circulation in my tanks, trying to replace it with sponge filters and threw out a bunch of grindy old filters that have been running forever. Yeah, anything to save a buck. So before we had our podcast of tips, tricks, and hacks, and one of the things that people kept commenting and still messaging us about is how Jimmy recommended the public to steal rocks. Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. You don't pay for rocks, people. You go out and pilfer rocks on a daily basis. Just a quick story. We used to have our uh, wholesale operation right next door to a bank. And they had this beautiful rock scape out there and it got dark at night. I'd go over there and fill a bucket and I'd do that for a couple of weeks. And then we used to have all these tanks full of different types of cichlids. We had electric limited chromis and the orange chromides and different things. And uh, we, we found that they just did much better for, they had a, a few rocks in there in the tank to be able to hide and uh, stay away from each other. Because when you throw in 50 electric yellow limited chromis in one tank, uh, they become the, a little bit territorial so don't go out and buy rocks just go to your landscaping place if you want to be honest and you know you can buy rocks for twenty dollars a ton i don't think you're gonna need a two you know two thousand pounds of rock but well, we even had tyler c8 message us they're listening to live the podcast right now um you can join as well by going to aquarium we podcast.com and joining discord but they message in saying going to landscape centers local collecting where uh legal and or schedule rock for decor no parking lots jimmy if i did uh, this wrong the first time my bad <laughs> so local sourcing you can't just like go on some guy's property and take it but farmers they love it being taken so go to a, your local farmer they do what's called rock picking because they want to use their machinery they don't want big rocks in their <clears> field <throat> so yearly they try to go through pick as many rocks out put them in a bucket. It's a lot of work. So you can either donate your time and pick some rock and take home as much as you want, or they already have a pile that's pre-picked that you can either give them a couple bucks or they probably just be happy enough. You can take whatever you want. I mean, it's for an aquarium. You're not taking a truck truck load or you could be for a pond. Who knows? You don't know. Or if you know somebody with a Creek that runs through their property, just be like, Hey man, can I go on a little nature walk? I feel like there's banjos involved. Like, Hey, you want to go for a walk? No, not with you. Not with the guy with missing teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the other things is food. Now, before we've had uh, we've had a conversation about food in the podcast. Buying in bulk is a double edged sword. So what I want to say is buy accurately. So know how much you feed. Know how much it's going to take you to go through, say, six months worth or a year's worth of food and buy appropriately. You don't want to get yourself a five-gallon pail of food and just use a third of it before it expires. 
we've seen a lot of people do that and then you know feed old food all the vitamin c is gone all the food and there's really le- minimal to no nutritional value to your fish and you're feeding expired garbage so do your homework know how much you feed and buy appropriately to save as much money as possible while not wasting with the expiration date yeah take your take your one can of, of food to fill it from your bucket and then each and every time you take food out of that bucket get all the air out of that bag and spend 30 seconds and get that bag as tight as you possibly can to get all the air out of it because the air is what degrades it and we just had i can't remember who it was we had on the podcast and he schooled us so hard the cobalt guy less that was less that's right less schooled us so hard on how to take care of food and how it deteriorates very quickly once it gets the moisture in it so and he also gives the recommendation that uh, if you do have the space in some fridge, put your food in the fridge. Flake, dry flake food lasts longer and better in a fridge. So if you have a beer cooler, you don't mind it sitting in, throw it in there. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea to put it into the uh, freezer, but then he schooled me and said, well, the, that moisture then gets uh, kind of frozen on to the flake. You're and... killing some of the probiotics. Yes. Oh, that's right. Probiotics. That... Because yogurt for fish is cool. It is. Hashtag fruity, fruity Pebble Flake at Cobalt. Yogurt is pudding's well-cultured cousin. You know that? What? Did you hear before we started? No. I'm saying that yogurt is pudding's well-cultured cousin. Think about it. Yeah. He said culture. I said cultured. Or I could tell you some more snail jokes. Nope. God, no. We went over those in the best stuff. That was, that was pretty great. Also, grow your food. Right. You don't have to just do flake or all these crazy foods. We heard Peter at the beginning of the podcast feeding all these different foods. Do live, guys. You know, get yourself a Daphnia culture running. You know, uh, if you're daring and hate your plants and want to have the risk or have hunting fish, you know, make a grab a scuds tank, you know, grow some pests and feed live. Even I've heard of people doing like a earthworm bed in the backyard. You know, get the get the spade and pitchfork out. Not only is live food most of the time better in those circumstances, not feeding goldfish or other live fish, but, you know, Daphnia is a fantastic thing to culture. There was, what, vinegar eels? That's another thing for baby fish. Micro there's, eels, there's a thousand things. There's a really good book you could get, and it's um, Mike Helwig, I think is his name, or Helwig. It's a really good book. It's like 30 or 40 bucks, but it's well worth getting. And it literally goes with like step by step on how to culture your own food for and it gives like everything from insiphornia all the way to vinegar eels to everything that you could think of. But and I, I have, have that book. I do too, because Adam got it for me. Yes, I did. It's a really good book. Yeah, it's a very good book. Hey Adam, I'm your friend too. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> all right, what else you got, Jimmy? What else do I got? You know, it sounds stupid, but a lot of these pet stores will adopt you a fish to save you some money. And it's usually somebody's mean fish or somebody's too big fish. But depending on, on what you got going on, I mean, you could go into your local pet store and either adopt a fish or buy a used fish. Or if you live by Ohio, you can contact your local fish rescue at Ohio Fish Rescue. Right. And save yourself some money. If you're on a budget and there's nothing wrong with saving a fish and giving it a good forever home. If you can adopt a cat, you can adopt some fish. Nobody's got to do your homework. Nobody wants to adopt a cat because cats are too independent and mean. And they are a risk to your tank, I think. They have an attitude too. I don't like cats. Don't get like it. You're a dog person. I am a dog person. Yeah. Excellent. What else, Jimmy? That's all I got right now. Well, I have ways to save money. So we mentioned before Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. If you find used tanks, I'm really thrifty. I wait for the crazy deals of having a tank that has bad seals because sealing a tank's really easy. I wait for uh, any type of old, like, you know, part of the lid got ripped off. I-, I want some work on the tank. And I my goal buying used is 50 cents a gallon. That's my rule of thumb unless it's a really big tank. If you have something 125 gallons at north, I'll do above 50 cents a gallon sometimes, depending on the quality of the tank. But that's my goal. If I get a 50 cents a gallon in the United States of America, that is a great place to be at tanks. I have too many tanks uh, that I want to buy. I can't afford spending premier prices. That's where I get new tanks 
you want to look for your dollar per gallon sale at your local big box store it used to be just one store but then both of the big box stores in the united states picked it up so watch for it you can go to fish forums they post it ahead of time like hey guys this month dollar per gallon sale coming up they have limited it i think now you can only get like 45 gallons it used to be up to 55 so check your store's limitations but for new tanks just the bare bone tank dollar a gallon use i want to be about 50 cents a gallon well you know why both big box stores do the same sale right why is that they're both owned by the same place are they now yeah they're both owned by the same hedge fund i did not know that they're no longer competition it's all an oligopoly ladies and gentlemen yeah, technically. You know, it used to be what it used to be 10 gallon 20 gallon 20 gallon highs 40 gallon breeders and 55 gallon tanks but i think they've eliminated the 55 gallon tanks now no 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 you can still get 55s on sale can you yeah. i've not seen them the last time I did get notification from uh, one of the big box stores that they had a bucket gallon sale. And I said to my wife, said, hey, they got a bucket gallon sale. And she goes, why don't you go fill up the tanks you have downstairs? So wah, wah, wah. Fine. Now, again, the exceptions are large tanks. And then anything that's two gallons and below, it's really difficult as well to get new tanks for 50 cents a gallon. doesn't really happen. If you get like a two and a half gallon tank, you're looking at anywhere from as low as eight bucks to as high as 20. So uh, used... Still, I like to go for the 50 cents a gallon, but expect to pay five, six bucks for that same tank. What else you got, Robs? Well, you can also use that promo code from Joe Shrimp Shack for 15% off using Aquarium Guys at checkout. You know, taking any type of code, if you, if you go into your, your internet provider and, and you start Googling stuff, uh, there's a lot of places that they'll have coupons uh, for Amazon, for different things and stuff. So if you uh, spend the time, take the time to go looking for deals, there are deals out there every day. And most of the places that you go for like online ordering for live Aquaria, dry Aquaria, they'll have some sort of place that says, you know, subscribe for updates. Do that. Most of the time they'll give you coupons or notifications when sales are happening. But my last and best piece of advice is strictly don't be dumb. It's the thing that costs you the most in the end. So whether it be not researching a fish and realizing that they're going to eat each other and lose money on dollars just disappearing and dying in your tank or that you didn't do the temperature stuff correctly, I think the best example of don't be dumb is not just doing the homework and research, going online, trying to learn about it as much as you can deep dive, but also take the time Find your club, find a person that is an expert that knows and has had the creature before. I'm going to give the uh, example of shrimp. I've had good luck with shrimp in the past, but it's never been my best skill set. It's been always adding shrimp to certain tanks that are already established. And, you know, I don't really care if they live or die. They don't do that well. And I went to Joe Shrimp Shack, right, and had Joe seen his entire rack. It was low-cost setup. He had a bunch of small tanks in the rack, no heat. The only thing he put was one pump to run all the uh, air in all the tanks. Gave me tick, uh, trips and trips, uh, tricks and tips on how to build my own shrimp rack. And I have, what, four tanks now? I'm trying to set up to 20 tanks. Slowly uh, built, putting them as I get the pieces in and order them. It's expensive. You don't want to do all, this, all at once. And these tanks, the four tanks that I have, are literally exploding there's almost no maintenance. I do water changes every two weeks as instructed. And it just has a wonderful experience that has been by far the most painless process I've done in a shrimp keep uh, and fish keeping altogether. So do your homework, take time, talk to someone that's done it the right way. Take your extra shrimp or fish and use it for store credit or cash to purchase what you need. So your hobby does not cost you a fortune. So I think you got one big one, don't you, Jimmy? One big one. Let me pull it up here. You go ahead. Adam, you got anything? I got. A, I didn't. I dropped this. Adam, no. did you fart in your towel? Did I what? Did you fart in your towel? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. What the hell is the matter with you today, Robs? Yeah, he's, I don't he's, know. He's, I just got a fart fetish. I miss you, and I smell something terrible over here. I'm not going to lie. After going through some of these filters... I found out I have two big hang in the back filters in the back of my uh, 125 aquarium. And I pulled one of them off that was rattly. And I realized, oh, this other one hasn't been running for a while. I plug it in just to initiate the egg salad smell. Why? Why? The entire basement. 
I, I didn't know how long it's been unplugged. Clearly, it's been unplugged a, a, a while. I don't do water changes on my giant plantic tank that often. I just kind of top off. I didn't uh, didn't see the flow because it's covering the plants are covering it, or that I would normally see bubbles for flow. And uh, yeah, I turned it on. Biggest egg salad smell I have ever experienced from a tank. And it made you happy? <laughs> or no. Happy? All right. Well, I felt grossed it. out. I finally, I found, I found it. I don't know if there's any truth to this. We talked about this uh, before we went on air. I'm just going to read this. I found this online. It, a way to save money on water changes. Now, this is a marine aquarium. And for those of you who don't know, that's an aquarium with salt water in it. Uh, Very pretty for, fish. For, for your beginners, Adam, for you. Anyway, here, here's what I'm reading, and, and don't take me to school and beat me. I'm just, I'm just reading what I'm reading. It says. So what you're saying is we don't necessarily condone what's going to be said here. I want somebody to try this and call me. Okay. And I want them to send me their their excess uh, nitrate remover. All right. So do continue. All right. It says here, water changes. Instead of doing repetitive water changes to reduce nitrates, think about using vodka or ethanol. It's a method to reduce nitrates. A pint of cheap vodka or a bottle of ethanol from your local drugstore costs less than sea salts, and it's a lot easier to squirt 5 milliliters of vodka into your tank twice per week than it is to do a water change. What a novel idea. I, 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 I don't like know where it. to start. I figured that there's a meme waiting to happen for this. Like, in Russia, nitrates don't get removed. It removes the nitrates. I just, I just love this. I just, I'm thinking, you know, two swigs for the tank and four swigs for me it's just <laughs> water changes are going to be so much easier at my house so well, i don't know if there's any truth to it but i'm on this website and i'm reading it and the stuff they had before it made a lot of sense this one i kind of went huh like, so i can just hear like the the clickbait potatoes will help you stop water changes I'm like what I, I i don't know why not so if you uh if you want to try this uh buy yourself a cheap bottle of vodka i would suggest getting anything uh from a gallon on up, just to make sure you have enough. Uh, because once you probably ruin your entire marine aquarium of $2,000, you probably want to drink that vodka uh, to make yourself feel better. <laughs> my personal thought. How, right. how is this supposed to work? Can anybody explain this to me? So in my theory, right, this, this, because it's alcohol-based, and now vodka is supposed to be one of the pure alcohols, it's closest to Everclear without the full burn, that when you pour alcohol in water, it will oxidize alcohol will automatically evaporate into the air over time. And it's probably grabbing and oxidizing nitrates while it's at it is my, is my theory. Cause again, when you cook with it, it cooks out. If you let alcohol sit like gasoline, even, you know, that same type of properties, it all oxidizes into the air and evaporates. You know, you consider how much um, vodka tequila is used in cooking wine. I mean, there's always a reason that it makes things better. That's just make you forget about the shitty food you're about to eat. I, 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 I had some pork pabil this weekend that was excellent, and we put three shots of tequila in there, and we had other shots of tequila, and then I got the tequila virus, and then I had a quarantine. I'm glad you quarantined for, on the couch. for everyone's safety, yes, especially your couches. Here's the thing. I'm just thinking about this back back to this vodka thing. You need to still do the water changes because that removes like the chemicals out of the water for the fish, and like your coral. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But But, would it work for fresh water? Try it. Let's assume this is not recommended, right? Don't put this in your active saltwater aquarium. Instead, set up a test thing. Put some plants in there. No fish. Add some sort of ammonia base so you can get it going. Make sure the cycle is going. And after you have all of this done. Try the vodka treatment. Contact us back. We need to know more. That way uh, we can test other alcohols like aviation gin and see if we can get Ryan Reynolds on. We should get Ryan Reynolds on. Oh, wait. I because forgot. He, he, he just sold his company this week. Did he? Yes. I think that and uh, what was it? George Clooney's uh, alcohol as well got, got bought. George, George Clooney's alcohol made him a flippin' fortune what was it like a billion yeah it was a tremendous amount of money i think uh ryan reynolds got his for like 600 million no kidding yeah for like a no-name gin company that was the, pretty crazy the, these these celebrities and stars that are, are doing these different um all these different 
types of booze and, and things. I did not realize it until we were at a concert. And this, this is going to come right back. We were at a concert, and we were doing a meet and greet with a band. And this gal pulled out a bottle of wine out of her purse. And I'm going, how did you get past that security? She goes, they don't look at me because I'm, I'm I, you know, she's probably 55 years old. And she goes, you know, why would I sneak in a bottle of, of, uh, of wine in here? But what we're doing, we were going to meet the band Warrant. Anyway, Warrant, one of the guys there has his own wine company. And this woman had over, and she showed us pictures, over 400 bottles of booze signed by stars that she's met. And she, she buys one of her bottles and she either, you know, they, they'll, you can buy a bottle sometimes online that will be signed and stuff. So she has all this booze. She says she had about $4,000 in booze on the, on the wall that she'll never open up because they're all signed autograph bottles of booze, which is incredible. So it's just amazing uh, what these stars are making these days on stuff not attributed to what they're actually doing. All right. So message us. We're, we're very, very concerned that uh, this one is completely false. So we're not, we're not uh, giving it a whole lot of substance here. Don't take, uh, take our words for it. This is just something we found online. But if it does work for you, let us know. And for Dan Aykroyd that's listening into the podcast, we want Crystal Head Vodka Rights to sell for aquarium cleaning purposes. <laughs> I saw Dan Aykroyd and we got the bottle over at the house, don't we, Robs? Indeed. Well, for that, I think we've saved people enough money this podcast, don't you think, Jimmy? We did. And if, if you don't think we saved you enough money, then tune in next week and we will cost you money. Right. So if you think we saved you money, go on AquariumPodcast.com. Uh, go on the bottom. There's merch. Otherwise, you can donate directly to us. So uh, really help support the podcast, hosting fees, that, and uh, maybe we can get uh, Jimmy's eyebrows done. Yeah. And if anybody knows Betty White, could you give us her phone number? We still want to get Betty White on, on the podcast. Uh, we also, hottest woman alive. Hottest woman alive. And uh, still have a huge crush on her. Uh, if anybody uh, knows how to get a hold of, uh, who's the other guy we wanted on? I mean, who don't we want on? Chris Rock. <laughs> we wanted Chris Rock on. So if you, I'm down. If anybody knows Chris Rock, just yeah, give him a call. Uh, give, give him Rob's number to have him call us. <laughs> well, thanks, guys, again. And uh, Adam, you got any last uh, corpse for us? Uh, no. <laughs> Adam. The man that knows so much about Awfully. scrotum frogs and titty lands. Titty caca! <laughs> <laughs> Not better. Not at all better. No. That, was, that was this tremendous amount of information that I'll never get out of my head. Ever. Right up right up there with, all, with the dolphin thing last week. Never going to leave. But Well, thanks again, guys, and we will catch you next week. Thanks, guys, for listening to the podcast. Please go to your favorite place where podcasts are found, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever they can be found. Like, subscribe, and make sure you get push notifications directly to your phone so you don't miss great content like this. I never knew that a Minnesota accent could be so sexy until I heard Adam's voice. Go fuck yourself, don't you know? <laughs> That's my boy, don't you know.